welcome to worship. We're glad you're here with us. I'm Pastor Kim Montenegro, and I am at Fair Oaks United Methodist Church. I hope you feel the love of God. I hope you know you are loved by God and cared for by us as we enter into worship this week. Come, worship with us. We extend a special welcome to those who are single, married, divorced, poly, gay, trans, queer, straight, cis, filthy rich, dirt poor, live in a mansion, or are sleeping outside right now. Yo no habla inglés. We welcome you if your family has been here since the Mayflower or you just got here last week without papers. We extend a special welcome to those who have just rolled out of bed and are watching in their pajamas. Or have worn your Sunday best and especially those who got lost on social media and wound up here by mistake. We welcome those who are in recovery or are still addicted. You are welcome here if you help protect and serve or just got out of jail. We don't care if you're more religious than the Pope or just starting out on your religious journey. You are welcome here if you believe following Jesus is only one of many paths to spiritual enlightenment. We welcome those who think the earth is flat, those who can't spell, and those with multiple degrees. We offer a special welcome to those who have been harmed by organized religion and those who had religion shoved down their throats as a kid and those who could especially use a prayer right now. We welcome everyone every day, every day. with open, open hearts, hearts, open minds, and open, open hearts. hearts. Divine God, all that we hold dear, we ask that we offer it up to you. We give it to you in a place of willing to be settled in your love and in your peace. We ask that what's resting on our shoulders be relieved and let go. What's pulling on our hearts, gracious God, let us respond to with love and kindness What's aching in our bellies, gracious God, put at ease. Let us remember this is all happening in, within us, but happens in each of us. As we are all divinely connected to you and also uniquely ourselves. So in times of our trial, remember that others are in trial too. In times of our peace. Let us connect with the grand scale of your love and peace. We lift up those who are hurting, who are in pain. We ask they be surrounded by your love and your gracious care. Amen. Hello, I'm Fraser. And I'm Estedra. We're here for another children's time. 
And today, because we will be uh, learning about Black Lives Matter, uh, we thought it would be a good idea to bring out the uh, updated pride flag from a few years back, uh, which contains a black and brown stripe to represent uh, uh, people of color, POC people. Um, and I thought it would be a good idea in order to learn these signs. I believe we have before, but uh, if we did, that was a long time back. Mm -hmm. So it's just better to uh, learn them again. Mm -hmm. So for uh, black, uh, I remember this one specifically because it's similar to summer, uh, but it's not in a very evident way. So, uh, black, you hold your finger out straight and make sure it is straight because if it, if it is curved, then it's summer. And then, uh, like on your brow or on your forehead, just slide it off and this is black. And then, uh, for brown, you hold up a B like we, uh, learned. And then you uh, hold it to one side of your face and bring it down. Uh, and so this is brown. We also wanted to teach you the sign, uh, or the phrase in sign language for uh, Black Lives Matter. The first sign is black. We all have already learned that. Then lives. Uh, which is two L's, start at, like, the on here, and then bring them up, and then matter or, or valued, uh, and the reason, and, uh, so you can remember value because the first, uh, because you make F's, and the reason you make F's is because, uh, B and F are similar sounds, you just voice for V. Uh, and then you take them like this, you will have them held together, and then you bring them apart and bring them back together. So let's put that all together. Black lives matter, or black lives are valued. Um, okay, I need to do that one more time. I messed up a little bit. Okay. Black, black lives matter. Black yeah. lives matter. Yeah. Okay. I messed up that time, so it's <laughs> equal. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of equal, we wanted to teach you a new phrase to end with. Um, moving on from I love you, which we do love you, but we wanted to teach you um, the phrase love is love. And we've decided to translate that as love equals love. Yeah, or love is the same as love. No uh, matter what kind of love it is, it's love. Yeah, because the is in there does the uh, job that you could say, like, love is the same no matter how it is. Mm -hmm. And it, that all just becomes is. Mm -hmm. So, in reality, it does mean equal in that. Okay, so how do we sign love equals love? So love, uh, so love is like this over your heart, uh, or you could do it like this, like you're hugging someone. Uh, so love and then equals, and I feel like this is a decent sign which you should be able to mm -hmm. remember, but if you don't, that's fine. I'm just able to remember it. Um, so where you hold both hands like this and then you push them out so they are equal, they're level, and then love. So putting that together, uh, love equals, equals love. love. each of us the same so to this broken world you came to change a heart to change a name to bring your love you walked as one of us to save 
wept with friends beside the grave You felt the lash yet you forgave To show your love So many killed by hate and fear To help us hear The raging witness that may clear The path to love In you the nameless dead are found To you our angry voices sound Speak from the sky, speak from the ground Move us to love You value each of us the same So you endured the cross of shame To give to all your holy of pain and spirit breath let us again begin to build on earth your reign your reign of love Good morning, folks. Our first scripture reading is from Psalm chapter 20. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all of your requests. Now this I know. The Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the God our Lord. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give me victory to the King. Answer us when we call. Our second scripture reading is Mark chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. The parable of the growing seed. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scattered seeds on the ground, night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. The parable of the mustard seed. Again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them, as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable, but when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. May God bless the reading of this holy word. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be with you, beautiful, inclusive, loving God. Amen. One of the mysteries of God is sometimes we don't know when we are to engage and when we are to rest. The Bible tells us we're supposed to do both. But when and how we do that is some part of the discernment that comes in. Sometimes we weep because there is no rest to be found. 
and we are exhausted. Sometimes we are to be active and moving, planted and growing and reaching out, connecting. And sometimes we are called to be asleep. Critical listeners and readers of the lectionary today will notice that the, the disconnected way, the irony of the Markian parable, which represents God's kingdom, it's inclusive. It's a community that undergoes a spore-like growth. Jesus's parable represents a version of the kingdom that can look like a positive, integrated life for the life of the listeners who are hearing the word. Jesus talks to his rural listeners about what the experiences that they are, that they have, that they know in their day-to-day -day life and how that could be like the kingdom of heaven, how the experiences of their life are valued and heard and understood by God. But as you know, and I know, some folks just don't get it. You can say it in multiple ways, in different ways, in ways that might experience, may be true for their experience and may not, and it still may not resonate for them. That's okay. Jesus tells the parable and he tells it for all to hear, for all to listen to. Some won't get it and some may take it as something interesting to hear or just an escape from a couple of hours of labor. But what the gospel tells us is that Jesus illustrates the gospel of the kingdom in parables only to the people and to all people who are able to receive it. But then separately, he goes in depth with a small group of his truish, true, true, most true disciples. He pulls them aside and they begin to pick apart the parable. Who is the seed? Who is the mustard plant? Who is the planter? Not all things are for all people, but all people are able to hear things that allow us to grow and challenge them. As we continue this month of Reconciling Ministries, we listen to what it means for Black Lives to Matter. Who are we in this parable? How does it affect our daily life? Will we get it? Or will there be a group that pulls aside to deeply interrogate the text, to learn more and a heart that's open to rooting deep and growing in faith? I hope over the next couple of weeks, you look at what we're talking about here at Fair Oaks and see what ways you're able to be rooted in our ministries, what ways you're able to be changed to bring about the kingdom here and now, what ways in which some part of our hearts have fallen on hallowed ground. Come, learn, be with us this week. Hi, and welcome all to Fair Oaks UMC. This is a month that we explore topics of inclusion. This is a difficult topic to discuss as it is such a supercharged topic in the climate of the world today. The goal of this message is to try to help conquer the division that seems to be at the heart of every issue we will address this month. This is a taste of what I've gathered so far. All lives don't really matter until all lives matter. All lives matter is a statement that black lives have been historically excluded from. Now is the time to really take a close look at this and try to change the way we look at, look at and react to these things. The history is always a part of the present, whether we like it or not, and we can't see the future without the whole picture of us. The protests during the equal rights movement of the 1960s seem to have made great strides toward equality for people of color. But looking at the wealth of information regarding everything faced by anyone, we can see that we still lack balance. The Black Lives Matter movement began in 2013 in response to the killing of Trayvon Martin, who was killed by a neighborhood watch volunteer for looking suspicious. 
This brought anger and sorrow and a profound lack of faith in the justice system regarding the treatment of people of color. This is a big something that cannot be conveyed by me or even fully understood by me in one message here. I have found a book series that seems to cover a lot of material. It's called Racial Justice in America. It's written by Hedrick Nichols with Kalisa Wink. The Black Lives Matter movement has become something bigger, something about human rights for all people, similar to our inclusive ministry here, which is working toward balance and acceptance for all in this world that we share with one another. There is much we can do to sow seeds in this world that can bring forth the balance we currently lack. We each have our own way of knowing we make a difference. We each have a how and the first step is research. I invite you to take some time out of each of your days to be proactive and be the leader of your own devotion to this and take a look at where these feelings come from and whether or not we need them. We briefly covered stereotypes in our first message. Is one person capable of atoning for what someone who looks like them may or may not have done? We can take a big close look at our biases, read about them, the history of them, and the value we give them over love. Allies in everything unite the world and defeat division, which is the real problem in all of this. Thank you for your patience with me as I discover my own ignorance and share it with you. I have to look at what I don't know. Reading the things I've read so far, I have realized that I haven't considered where these things I've learned so far have come from. Are the sources valid? Are the experiences I read about actually written by the people who lived and experienced them? Or is it written by a well-meaning, well-educated person who didn't have the personal experience and doesn't really understand? Have I gotten this info from the internet? Have I cherry-picked it to support my personal beliefs? I've learned that when I find something that contradicts what I may feel or believe, I need to look more deeply at where it comes from. I recommend source checking with the fact checking sites we'll provide in this service. I'm grateful to you all and again, as ever changingly as you possibly can, don't ever change.
Thank you for being in worship with us. I hope you come back. This is a place in which you are loved regardless of who you are, regardless of what's happened or whatever else people think of you. Thank you for those who make that true for each of the folks who are here every day. Thank you for those who make our worship part of what feeds you throughout the week. Thank you for the ways in which God has already created you to be you and you alone. Thank you. When the world seems most unfair,